I really, uh, in my mind, since I didn't have a topic, I was like, maybe today would be a perfect time to share an experience that I had, spiritual experience. But with that in mind, I thought maybe some others out there, instead of, you know, thinking about my experience, you know, share y'all experience and maybe combining our experiences together and getting more clarity because we're always forever a student. And so I really kind of wanted to talk about awakening and um, and when you get to a point of awakening, like, you know, what triggers it? What triggers it? What happens to your physical body, to your mental state of being? And to let you all know that well, this is basically how I'm experiencing something in my reality that I feel as though that there's more than one awakening process. Like, because we are forever students, we're forever expanding, we're forever jumping into different parallel universes. So, I kind of want to talk about that. And, um, and it's a beautiful theme because it's so empowering and you just feel so powerful in your physical reality. You begin to feel so invincible with all things in life. And, you know, you, you find joy in being, you know, God in human form if you know these things exist outside of you. It's almost like you begin to want to be invincible, like an incredible with your little superpowers. You begin to want to evolve as well. So, hey, brown skin, how you doing, babe? Hey, Keish. Okay, okay, y'all up in here. So, as far as, I'll go first if y'all want to chime in. As far as like awakening or whatever, like for me, for my personal experience, when I was younger, I always had like um, an imaginary friend, so to speak, that I would talk to. And, you know, I, I would always think, you know, at that time I was heavily in religion. So I thought it was Jesus, you know, that I was talking to. So Jesus was like my best friend and I would write letters to Jesus and stuff. And I would go in my closet and talk to Jesus and all. Right. And so, but it became really really powerful this energy and i would tell people you know that i had a friend and when i did that that was like a no-no in religion because it was like i was talking to entities or demons per se right but i always felt like there was an energy out you know that was greater than me so to speak i always had like um dreams that was really really extraordinary i would always hear people calling me or what I thought was people, uh, energies or uh, frequencies calling me. And um, I was deeply enrooted in uh, religion. And so it was a pivotal moment for me being in religion, just wanting to know why, wanting to question and wondering why you got in trouble if you questioned anything in religion. And so when I, I you know, left my mom's home, I decided to kind of like, you know, not go to church as much as I used to. You know, not not understanding why, just just not feeling comfortable with being there anymore. And so I would skip services here and there, and, and um, and I would explore in my mind other avenues, other things. You know, it, it seemed like I got to a point where I was questioning why so much that my mind was expanding and wanting to know those an answers. Because like I always tell you, God never asks himself a question that he or she don't already know the answer to. So it was like when I was asking myself why, it was like my consciousness was expanding and, and figuring out why. And I wanted to know more and more and more information, right? So not, o not only am I having the dreams, but I'm having what you all call sickness and dis-ease in my physical reality. So my physical reality because energetically i know hindsight that i was holding on to too much of negative energy not allowing my energy to flow like you know being in the state of this being here in love and allowing source energy to flow through me i had stagnated energy because of me holding a grudge against somebody at that time in my life and so i was exploring um foods you know herbs and spices for healing and all of this and that I was exploring books. I wanted to know about the ancestors. I wanted to know about voodoo per se, you know, I wanted to know about dark energy, you know, I wanted to know because, you know, they said in religion, don't do that. So I really was on a journey to do everything that they had told me not to do because I had been in religion so long. So I was like, you know what, 
I'm gonna go ahead on and backslide and I'm gonna just take the risk of going my ace to hell for doing it because I just wanna know why am I here? What is my purpose? So I just been on been on a journey that um unfolded to me being here. But through during the journey when I, I began to notice things was happening, when I changed my diet, I began to notice things was happening inside of my body. My body used to feel a little weird because at a cellular level, I began to feel my blood flowing in my body. At a cellular level, I felt the atom per se, the particles per se. I'm really still in tune with my body like that now. And so energetically, I began to feel things. I began to hear noises. Some people, you know, like the ringing in the ears per se. And sometimes, you know, the ringing in the ears, I work for a utility company, so sometimes the ringing of the ears is really when you're like maybe close to maybe a, a substation or, you know, transmission tower or something like that there. But when you're not in that particular zone, the ringing of the ears is you tapping into different frequencies, you know? And so another thing is like, you know, the, your skin, your skin begins to change. It's almost like how in the biblical text that we talk, about serpent energy sometimes you know the serpent energy is kind of like the shedding of the old you you know you begin to shed and you become renewed in your body your physical body begins to be renewed and so what else the draining sensation you remember that movie they had this movie um i am lucy yeah or Lucy, just Lucy, with the lady, who, the white female who was um, tapping into 100% her, her brain capacity. Well, it's, it's like that there, like that scene where she had she had some kind of drugs inside of her and then it activated in her brain and, and stuff, stuff started just popping and going off. Like, So you kind of feel that in your head, like in the forehead, in your forehead, you feel like a, a crawly, well, for me rather, a crawly sensation, like like something is actually in your head just crawling you know them little june bugs i call it a little june bugs it's a little roly-poly bug that come out in the summertime in the south and if you touch it it has a hard shell and it rolls up into a ball well it feels like one of those little things is like crawling because it has so many legs it feels like it's crawling in your head and the top of your head sometimes for me you know it'll feel like um you're underneath a shower you know the drainage drainage of um fluids like your crown chakra being drained like your pineal gland being uncalcified like right and so you feel this sensation and equivalent to this here is when they're talking about the manna from on high the um land that's flowing with milk and honey in the biblical text you might remember that so all of these things are really biblical and are hidden Jews in the in the biblical text that happen to you and through you do, during what you call an awakening, an ascension or whatever. And maybe you lose weight or gain weight, you know. Maybe your appetite will change. You know, a lot of people go, just like with me, I stumbled upon it because I began to want to become a vegan. And when you start eating those higher frequency foods, because all things are free energy, frequency, and vibration, you attune to a higher frequency. And so then you begin to hear different things. This is why the ringing and you attuning in your ears start to happen. This is why maybe your vision may change a little bit more clear, you know, because actually I used to wear glasses. I don't even wear glasses no more. And it has a lot to do with cleaning up my diet too. But those are some of the things and I wanted to share that with you all. But the real reason why I wanted to talk about this is because there's really more than one awakening. You see, because we jump in and out of different parallel universes by just maybe by the blinking of an eye, by inhaling, exhaling, in and out, because there's so many different versions of you. <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I'm, I'm hopeful that you could understand this. So you, you, there's no just one of you. You exist in multiple realities at one time, simultaneously experience your, in, experiencing yourself because you are God and the totality of you wants to experience yourself. And so being that you're in different realms, just like I did a video showing you all about when you look up in the mirror and you have all of these different reflections of yourself, these people or these entities, so to speak, are alive, experiencing itself. So anytime you make a decision, like say, for instance, I chose to come here on this live. There's another version of me because I made the choice to come here and be consistent and be here on Mondays at eight o'clock. Well, 
the other version of me, one of many, chose not to. And so that part of me is experiencing maybe still being in the bed somewhere, <laughs> maybe just relaxing somewhere. Because anytime we make a choice, God wants to experience it both sides of that choice. And your God in human form experiencing itself. So not only are you split each time you do that, but you're split in all multiple realities of doing it because time does not really exist. Time is an illusion. So you are in all of those multiple realities experiencing yourself. Now going back to awakening, wait, let me see if y'all saying here because I got a really a lot on this particular subject. Let me see if y'all questions I'm up here. Okay. Um... Point it out, okay, release the resistance, yes, yes. Hey, Mildred, thank you for joining. Hey, Trey, I feel that on the top of my head, like it's opening. Yes, that's what it feel like, like there's a, like a oozing, like almost like it's coming from within, but when it comes and trickles down, it's almost like you're standing underneath the shower head in the bathroom. It's so relaxing, so peaceful. It's a beautiful experience. It really is. Okay. I just wanted to make sure y'all wasn't asking questions. So you go through this here and you, you evolve um, from that first experience, whatever that means for you. Because really what's happening is the serpent energy inside of you is rising up your spine. You ever seen like um, those pictures of um, the uh, gods and the pharaohs per se? And they always have the snake um, in their forehead, the serpent energy. Well, that's equivalent to kundalini energy. It's really energy that's um, dormant in all of our body that once we become conscious, so to speak, or when we're ready, so to speak, to awaken to our God self, it just rises. And what's happening is, is you're being activated. You know, your dormant DNA, supposedly the junk DNA that they say that we don't use. Well, we're kind of tapping everybody right now is pretty much tapping into that in the physical reality because of this particular age. This is the age of the coming of the Christ consciousness, which is an energetic thing. So whether you've been through an awakening or not, I just wanted to share about the skin uh, changing, about your appetite maybe, about maybe sometimes you feel maybe depressed too and don't want to be around people you know because you're trying to figure out really what's going on with you you might even feel like you don't belong here like an urgency to want to go home and like not feel a part of this thing called life or um physical reality in this particular form and um <laughs> but the beautiful thing about it is once you begin to get past that stage, you begin to seek so much for knowledge and you begin to learn more energetically about yourself and you begin to make peace with those, um, the chaos in your mind, you know, and be able to master more your emotions. And so when you get to that place, because your, your guide, so to speak, your higher self, so to speak, is not going to give you more than you can bear. And so when you get more comfortable, as you get more comfortable on your journey, it's like you're going to constantly be having another ascension and ascension and ascension. And you'll get to a place in your journey where you realize that it's just you, that you're alone in the physical reality, only experiencing yourself and everything that's happening in life is happening through you. And then you'll begin to realize that you are an immortal being, that life goes on for you. You better understand in the biblical text where it says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And life becomes so beautiful. And the beautiful thing about all of these ascensions is the fact that the people that you love, <laughs> love connects you all. Love connects you to all. So there's really no separation with those people there because you carry them with you in your heart. And so since you, there's so many realities of you, then there's so many realities of them too. And so you constantly meet them in different in different parallel universes. And, and so death becomes a total illusion for you. And, you, and you, you, you understand that maybe when I first got here in the physical reality on this thing called Earth, that I was on the lowest level maybe. And being that I was on the lowest level, there were other beings there that was other illusions there, a simulated environment that made me think maybe the news, maybe the so-called family member of mine, maybe 
whoever we I saw outside of me, they made me fearful of this thing called death. But really, it was just an illusion that those beings did not die because they have so many parallel universes. But the first level of consciousness was so intense for me. The reason why death and fear was so heavily amongst the first level of this thing called earth or the physical reality is simply because it had to encourage me to get off of that level. I had to have something that was provoking me, some energetic force that made me not want to supposedly die and go to hell, so to speak. And all of those things, even religion becomes purposeful. All of those things become so purposeful in your journey and you realize, oh, that was there and that was really a tool to push me to become more conscious like the conscious one. It was a tool that made me want to seek and get to know myself so that I can be elevate higher and come to another ascension. And so in the mindset of the awakened one, the like you know how i was saying oh death where's i thing you get to a place of ascension in your journey where it's like if you are the observer or you are timing out of one particular reality you know that life goes on you have no pain you have no you know no rebuttal because already in your mind consciously you already made the shift so once you shift your mind energetically mentally you have to embark on another parallel universe so other people are gonna fall kind of like by the wayside but you you will live on level after level lifetime after lifetime it's really a beautiful thing i don't want to go too deep in it but i kind of wanted to share a little bit about about the ascension on the different levels of just kind of like being just woke just your mental and where you are that you start to feel so empowered and you you start to <laughs> understand a lot of the things in the biblical text of why maybe supposedly Jesus wept of why there were different states of being and it was all one being in that biblical text because it was a story about you it's really the most beautiful love story about you and your journey and where you are today and every lifetime that you will be in for your tomorrow supposedly all the way up until you rise to christ consciousness so wait a minute let me see let me see let me see these comments getting ahead of me okay um releasing resistance oh okay okay I have the ringing in my ear. Is that the same? Yes. Yes. The ringing in your ear. If you're not close to like a substation, like I was saying earlier, it's your, your ears. You know how they say in the biblical text, you have ears and you do not hear. You have eyes and you do not see because you got to get attuned to it. You know, there's so many different frequencies here. Just like, like they have like doggy whistles. Dogs can hear them, but humans can't. But so that lets you know that there's different levels of hearing. There's different levels of seeing. There's different level of tasting, you know, just like, um, you know, like uh, the blue eyed being, they um, can't tolerate certain levels of seeing. But even for us m deeply rooted melanated beings that have the melanin in our eyes, we still, there's limits for us because there's, there's levels that we can't see because right here between this camera and um, myself, there's a whole parallel universe that you and I n are not seeing right here, but it exists. You know, so um, my wife, somebody said my wife, I don't know what they mean. Anxiety, yeah, yeah. Anxiety and depression may come to, because you're gonna start to feel like, well, maybe, not necessarily. You could feel like an outcast. You could feel like a weirdo, so to speak. You could feel like you're not, you know, you no longer belong. And so it's really important during those moments to have some type of positive self-concept about yourself you know have some positive so um, time for yourself to be surrounded by nature and things that are energetically heighten your frequency to be around maybe some sun so you could sun gaze and be electrically charged up every day and not stay cooped up in the house if you have to be by yourself go to the park by yourself or something like that where you're still outdoors but still you know by yourself as far as a human is concerned but you're with um the trees with your conscious as well so um <laughs> but for me being and i always say people tell me all the time don't say that because you're not but i always say that i'm introverted and 
So that was kind of like the easy part for me. And I still say that I'm introverted. And I say that not in a negative sense. I say that being proud of being an introvert because being an introvert is how I met God. And I love to say that. I really do. So I'm not being negative when I say that. But I still carry some of that alone time with me because when you're alone, really, you you connect with yourself and you receive in so many downloads and so many answers to a lot of things, you know. Sometimes, you know, coming up in religion, we want to just talk and we want to, um, you know, we want to pray all the time and we want to rebuke and all of this and speak in tongues and we're taught to, you know, send praises up and then the blessings going to come down and all of that. But, you know, sometimes it's really good to just be still and know that I'm God and say no thing. You know, years ago in, in past civilizations, you know, speaking words as much as we do now was something that it wasn't so frequent, you know. And so because, you know, they better respected the power of the tongue and spoke more impeccably than we do today. So sometimes it's, it's good to, you know, be that loner for a little while, you know, just to recharge. You don't have to isolate yourself, but just for a little while so you could be still and know that you're God. That wait a minute, life is happening through me. Wait, I was just thinking about that and look at it happening right there. Oh, I just imagined that right there. And look at me experiencing this year right now. You know, and when you start to pay attention to that, you really, really start to feel yourself and be empowered by yourself because it's a journey of remembering, remembering, remembering yourself like as far as you remembering that you are connected to the source and there's no separation, but it's also a journey of you remembering or gathering your thoughts back together in your mind or tapping back into 100% of your brain capacity <laughs> and knowing that all is well. And so, um, you might also have visits in your dream too, depending upon where you are. And basically what you see is what you go believe in. Like say, for example, you uh, believe in Jesus. Well, Jesus might come in the dream because this is all mental here. So ain't nothing wrong with believing in your Jesus. You hold on to your Jesus. But what I'm saying here is like you have um, vivid dreams of whatever you respect and you um, maybe worship and you look up to your ancestors. If you believe in that, Maybe your papa will come. If you believe in dark energies, maybe some dark energies will come there. Whatever it is, they begin to visit you and speak to you through love, you know? Because whatever it is you believe it in, I'm hopeful that you believe it in it for the sake of you loving that. Maybe you love Jesus. Maybe you love Buddha, Thod, Krishna, whoever, Muhammad, you know? Whoever, Grandpa, you know? Grandma, or what? Or whoever maybe you just believe in, in in crystals or whatever and maybe a big old clear course is just gonna come in your dream you're gonna lay on it and it's gonna clear all the negative energies away it really doesn't matter but you'll begin to have those dreams and visions of the night in the in the book of um, I think it's in Proverbs in the or Psalms one of the two how they say in the biblical text in a dream and a vision of the night when man sleeps and slumbers I give him his orders and his and his instructions so oftentimes in your dream, these energies will come forth to you and be visible only to you so that you can remember when you wake up and you would have that ponder and thought in your subconscious mind to find out who that is, or what that is. It's all a journey to keep you going forward and not staying on one leaf or nibbling on one tree in the garden forever because it's, it's endless, it's boundless. It's about thrills. It's about expansion. It's about you tapping into who you are. And it's going to happen when you ready and only you ready. You running the show on your awakening because you're the only person that set your clock to do this here thing. And so, um, let's see. I, I kind of covered every, everything that I can think of. Let's see. Lately. Money has been a thing on my side. I'm not manifesting the way I used to. Money. Because you have resistance in, in the area of money. If you're not doing it like you used to, you don't put up a wall of resistance. So you have to pretty much clear the resistance. And I spoke about this in the last um, video. Clearing the resistance. Check that video out. Because at the end of the day, if you don't receive the money, 
if you don't receive the money we right now, like the money that you desire, the abundance or the maybe to pay the bill right now, what is the worst thing that's going to happen to you? Like ask yourself stuff like that. Well, am I going to die right now? And we just talked about death a minute ago. Well, if, if I do die in the physical reality, I ain't going nowhere but to another parallel universe. You see, you got to soften the blow on what the, the things that have you feeling this ease and disharmony. You got to make sure that you know that, okay, everything will be all right no matter what. So if I don't have the money right now, the worst thing, gonna, thing that's going to happen is just, I don't have the money. I'm still going to be sitting here. Well, I do have friends. I do have family. Maybe I could go work at da 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 Just think about the things that will lift you up. Just go general with it instead of worrying of, or thinking about the thing that you are lacking. And then once you go general with it, what you did right there was you released some of the resistance. And now you could jump back in and, and get onto the frequency of imagining the day after you won the money. Now it's easy to go there. Now, the day after, you don't worry about how you're going to get the money or obtain the money. No, oh, I won a lottery type stuff. Oh, somebody gave me this. No, don't go there because how it's going to happen ain't your business. No way. You go to the day after where you got it already, where you're laying down up in your bed and you, or you're on the phone with your girlfriend. Pretend you're calling your girlfriend. Girl, you were, yesterday was the blast. That was the best day of my life. Girl, when I got that money, da, 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 you make up your own story. Your God, use your human imagination to get out of any situation. Use this here. Everything that you need is inside of you. It's really not about the money. It's not about the money. It's about that feeling. It's about that, that part of the journey of getting it. Because you're God and you just want to give yourself the gift. And the gift is God too. So what you do is you jump over there to receiving the gift card where you have it already. Because like I said earlier, you exist in multiple realities. And so already in a multiple reality, your abundance exists. You just got to find yourself over there. So that's how you get over there. <laughs> okay, let's see where I left off at. Um, thank you for the rose. Mia? Maya? Is that my Maya? Oh, is that another Maya? I got a friend named Maya that's been following me for a while. I feel like it's up in my head. Okay, I answered that already. Let's see. Uh, oh, man, I don't like when that does that. It goes so fast. Meditation is a must. Yeah, you can do meditation in different ways, too. You don't necessarily have to be, you know. Oh, why can't I manifest so fast? I've been... Shuffling for a month. Okay, something I want to hear. Okay, I've been. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, wait. Let me do the um, manifestation thing first. Um, I mean the um, the first question. Wait, what was that one? Oh, meditating. The meditating question. You don't have to do it like sitting in the dark. You don't have to be in the dark all the time. You could be meditating on your way to you know. No, we're not to work when you get to work in a parking lot, you know, you can do it at a park, you know, just being still, just breathing, just being in that moment, you know, whatever it takes to relax you, you could do it sitting in a chair, you know, and take, start off with smaller increments just to steal your mind, just to breathe, just to become one with all things, start off small, maybe start off at 10 minutes and 15 minutes and your duration and your peace and your comfort and understanding will begin to come. Just as long as you practice it, you could do it while you're drifting. I love to do it when I'm drifting off to sleep because at that moment, I just feel so connected. That moment, I'm about to go into another realm, you know, so I just think about all the things. And trust me, y'all, like I said, I'm very introverted. I'm not braggadocious at all, but trust and believe I get what I want. <laughs> I'll be sharing some things, but I'm not a braggadocious person by far, but, um, it works. I know it works. That's why I want to share with you. So going to the next, um, question, um, why can I manifest little things so fast? Because you don't have any resistance. We're just talking about that. I've been affirming for someone to say something I want to hear. Well, the little things are so easy. You know why? Because you don't care. And that's part of surrendering. That's part of what I was talking about of, of softening the blow earlier when I was talking to the um, Keisha about the money. You don't care if um, you see a bird, you know? So affirming to see a bird fly in the sky ain't nothing for you. Oh, but with that thing that you want that person to say, you just, oh my God, he hasn't said it yet. Oh my God, you thinking about it. You got the resistance going for it. 
And oh my God, if this person will say this thing here, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe, you know, that thought, you know, about it. That's why you got to surrender. You got to, you got to, you got to know, you got to go over there where you've heard it already that that person said it. That person already said it to you, whatever this here thing is. And so you holding it in your heart, you're living it that because it happened already and you're happy already. You remember how it sounded in your ear. You remember the scene where you were located in the physical reality when they said it. You remember the joy that you felt in your heart. And now you're carrying it with you and the person said it. Nobody can tell me the person didn't say it. But whatever that thing is also at the same time. You have to believe in your heart that you already are it. Like say, for instance, let's say, let's give it a name. I don't want to get in your business, but let's say that you tell this person, you want them to tell you that you, that they love you. But here's the thing. You're not really changing the people. What you're doing is changing yourself and the people must conform. So if it's, for example, somebody you want to tell you that they love you you have to find or see them through the eyes of god and send love to them first because life is happening through you not to you so when you send your love then that person has to send it back to you that's how the laws work you know so you imagine you saying that you love that person then imagine them person saying it to you and in this imagination you not Thursday, you're not, oh, finally, you know, your, your self-concept is up to par. You know that this person already loves you. You really don't even have to tell you in your human imagination. You already know you're not believing no more. You're not hopeful no more. Gone all those days. I have entered into knowing. This is what they're talking about in the biblical text when they talk about that right now kind of faith. You have to have it right now, the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things that are not seen. You you don't need to see it. Forget what this physical reality is showing you. You felt it. You experienced it already. And you're holding it in your heart already. Life happens through you. When you release that resistance, you get everything you wanted. Everything you ever wanted. Because divine timing is when you don't have no, no resistance to anything. And then bam, it's right there. Bam, it pops up. Okay. So let's sit for a while, still awakening. Oh, okay, cool. Meditation is a must. I read that one. I'm always in hermit mode. My peace of mind is fire. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Oh, Lord, I didn't hit a button. Okay. It really is. Oh, mine is a terrible thing to waste. It really is terrible. And, and, and letting foolishness get inside of it is terrible, too. When you dwell on the negative, because for every, everything negative, there has to be a positive. Because it'll defy the law of polarity, if not being two sides. So you can always find the good. You could always go general and, and lessen the blow of whatever you're going through. But that's if you want to. But they have some people in physical reality don't want to. They like the, the negative. You know, they, they attention seekers, you know. You know, like when they go to the hospital, for example, you know, like, oh, they admitted me in the hospital. And so now you got to call everybody. Oh, you coming to see me? No, get yourself up out of there. Nobody won't come see you like that. Get up out of there and stop calling people. What you doing in the hospital? What's your frequency doing so low that you had to go there? That ain't nothing to be bragging about. That ain't nothing to be talking about and calling everybody to come and see me. Oh, little old pitiful me. I'm at my lowest point. I'm at the bottom, I'm at the hospital, and I want you to come and see about me and have pity on me. But some people like that type of attention. So that's why I say, you know, whenever the person is ready, whenever they ready, because really, really, it's not the doctors, it's not the surgery, it's that person making up their mind. Back going back to how you were saying the mind is vital, a mind is a terrible thing to, to waste. <laughs> you ever notice that in speaking of hospital, you know, you could, you could, um, you could get a leg amputated, you know, you, you see people with little patches on their eye, their eyeball and out of their socket, you know, with the, you know, the little, uh, nub hand or whatever they call it, where the arm been cut up or whatever, but you ain't nobody walking around here brain dead 
when your brain is done, you done. You there's no more. <laughs> you can get anything else just taken off of you. You know, one breast. You know, your balls or something being removed or whatever. You know, anything but that brain, that mindset, that infinite intelligence. Mm -mm. You're not gonna be in physical form without that there. So don't waste it. Don't waste that. My grandpa appeared in my dreams recently. Oh, I was giving him herbs to heal him. Oh, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you do. And it really and truly, they be in a different realm. They be in a different realm, experiencing bliss and joy and well-being. You know, calling them already healed, you know. That's beautiful. Hey, Dion, how you doing, babe? Thank you. Amen. So no resistance. Yeah, no resistance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel bird. I like watching. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Someone just joined the live. Did the same thing. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, I don't want to be here uh, too long and overstay my hour. Uh, what time is it? 8.37. Oh, okay, I'm not doing bad. But um, I really just wanted to come on to be consistent and to say hey to everybody and just really talk about uh, consciousness if you have any more questions. If not, so yes, no resistance. Definitely the vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that was my experience and I encourage you to keep on and don't give up. If you need to take a break, you know, in, it's just all mental. So if you ever get like scared, you know, cause you know, you know, sometimes we have, you know, the boogeyman in our subconscious or Freddy Krueger or going to hell and all of this here or the devil coming to get us with the picture fork. If you ever feel fearful, remember this here. <laughs> You could always speak to yourselves because this is all you and say, give me a break. Not now. You could always say, slow down because it's just you. It's your journey. You have to speak to the winds and the waves like they were talking about in, in religion. Speak to the winds and the waves and they'll obey. And know that the most powerful form of energy that really, really runs this thing is the energy of love. And it ain't that boogeyman stuff. It's a, it's a source energy that is rooted in love. And everything that you see outside of you is really for you. There's an illusion of separation, uh, separation that makes you think that it is not for you. But all things are working out for you. Even those so-called bad things. Definitely the vibe I needed today. Hi, Sin City. <laughs> I like that. Hi, Marshawn. Hi, Anthony. Thanks for being here. Wow, well, someone just joined the live with the same name as the person I'm speaking of. Oh, now look. Okay, we go deal with that there. Now, you say, is that a sign? Make that a sign for you, God, in your kingdom. Make it a sign. Make it a sign to mean something positive for you. Yes, that's your sign. To somebody else, somebody else might tell you, your little doubt Thomas in your subconscious mind might tell you, oh, there ain't no sign, girl, that was just a coincidence. People, how you think they're going to have more than one, less than one person, I mean, only one person with the same name. And so don't believe that. So what? You make it a sign. That's a sign. Period. Don't ask me. Don't ask nobody else. It's law in your kingdom that you just made that a sign. That's how that go. And so you find, find the good, find the signs, find it. And the universe gonna give you more of it. See, so it's really, really, really easy to miss something that you're not looking for. So what you do is you start looking in that direction of whatever this here sign or wh whatever this is person, you look for the good only. And you have to find more good. Just like those little ladies that be, you know, like, feeling a little insecure and they start going through their partner's phone, whatever they looking, they're looking and they're going to find, they're going to find. And it could very well be something, maybe a little picture that he was looking at on a little regular man there, but they're going to find. 
So you go and find the good and make apply everything and count it as joy. This is why the biblical text would say to us, um, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are love and joy and good report, if they have any virtue in them, think on these things. So you have to think on that. Think on it. Look and thank yourself for it too and be proud of yourself. Because look, I gave myself a sign because all of this is happening through you anyway. I gave myself a sign. I wonder what other sign I'm going to give myself next. I wonder how many endless signs there'll be in this reality. Oh man, this is beautiful. Just go ham with it. Nobody don't know what you think. You can think all kind of good stuff. But you can think all kind of negative stuff too and keep you stagnated in your journey. You could be enslaved for eons and eons in your mind. And nobody will know. Because you'll be in jail. You'll be in detention all by yourself. And instead, break yourself free. Break yourself free. And imagine whatever you want to imagine. Imagine more love, more joy. Imagine this person telling this to you. Imagine imagine me seeing this person tell you. Go put me up in there. That I see it. I heard it. And I'm, I'm telling you, look. You, you're God. I told you you was God. I told you you could be doing have anything. Throw me in there. I have so many different realities of versions of myself. One of me will come forth for you. <laughs> That's how this game go. That's how powerful we are. Let's see. Okay, I was busy here and present now. Hey, Miss Being So. Yeah, you laughing, Akilo. I see you, but I'm so serious to you. Enjoy your evening. Thank you for being here, uh, Dion. I enjoy the vibe and the wisdom. Yeah, so so keep that in mind, you know, whatever you want it to be. It's what you want it to be. Always it's going to be what you want it to be. Your spiritual awakening, I was sitting here talking about how my experience was, but your experience might not be like that. It's going to be what you want it to be. If you think it's going to be scary, it's going to be scary. If you think, you know how they have the people on the videos, they say, oh, you don't want to go up in there. You don't want to go up in there. Because all the demons going to come out of there. Your demons the ones that you put in there? <laughs> but if you believe in that sort of thing, then, oh, it'll be scary for you. So shall it be. It has to be because you're God and you're creating this thing through thought. Through thought. That's, that's your electric magnetic frequency, thought and your feeling. And when you put them together, they create a spark of electromagnetic wave of energy that goes out. It goes out, but it must bring back your, your desires or your fears. But it's going to bring you back something because you just sent that energetic force out. So just, just pay attention to what you're putting out because it's coming back. As above, so below, on earth as it is in heaven. As within, so without. That's all it is talking about. It's talking about us. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. So that's it. I'm at the end of, um, oh, thank y'all for being here. I really appreciate y'all being here. I'm at the end of the comments. And like I said, if you need to take your time, slow down, baby. It's no rush. We've been here for eons and we will forever be. But enjoy your journey. Enjoy your journey. That's what you do. And think of it as it's the most thrilling experience. Think of it as if you're never going to get this thing wrong. And I don't need to fear because I have my back up. You know, I have the most powerful form of energy working through me every day. And never forget that. And um, if you all ever need to um, reach me on my website for a consultation, my website um, address is in my um, profile, www.soulofthearthpub.org. I'm in the middle of um, moving some of my stuff out of this one warehouse to another. So I'm really only doing detoxes, my um, my consultations, and selling the sleepwear that I have available in my book or my website. So all of my other personal care items is out of stock right now. But nonetheless, this video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed.